Sometimes making over furniture reminds me of like Disney musicals, you know? I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing. That song, Into the Unknown, <laughs> that's what making over furniture sometimes feels like to me. This makeover is no different. Hi, my name is Sarah. Welcome to my new and improved shop. If you guys are into makeovers and DIYs, then please consider subscribing. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen a few weeks ago now that I got this guy on Facebook Marketplace for free. It is so ugly it's so ugly I can see why they were giving it away but you know what ugly is my cup of tea into the unknown <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> hope that my goal of turning it into a piece that is desirable again enough babbling somebody told me I talk too much so <laughs> let's get into it here we go remove all of this and the hardware. making a mixture of sawdust and wood glue. Almost as much as I dislike MDF, particle board is right up there with it. <laughs> now the particle board was swollen in some places, not completely water damaged like I've done in the past, but swollen. So now that I've done the that is not going anywhere for anyone. Glue and the sawdust, it is nice and strong and I'm very happy with it and I do that in a number of places on the dresser. What I'm gonna do right now is figure out the base for this thing and then we're gonna get to painting. I have already shellacked it, uh, given it with the clear shellac on the sides as well as the inside. This here is oak. <clears throat> On the front so this is oak this is oak so I just measure the side of the dresser this dresser actually comes just under 27 inches and a standard dresser dresser can be anywhere from 26 to 44 I don't I don't particularly want it 44 inches high <laughs> that's a tall boy I have cut and sanded two of the front legs and two of the back legs. I have now cut and off cut the, a piece of scrap that I don't need that I'm going to be putting in between these two legs just to give them 
added strength. Just mark with a pencil right where I'm going to put the pocket holes because once I get it over to the jig I always, always forget where I want to do the pocket holes. So I want pocket holes also along the top just to, actually let's do three. One, two, three along the top that will come into you. is we've got a pocket hole on each end now I'm gonna do those three pocket holes there all of that and I'm going to also glue it Okay, did anyone else notice I put the wrong legs <laughs> on each side? Mm -hmm. Yep. Craig also make these little plugs. It's not ideal that I stuffed up that way, but save wasting this whole piece of wood. Just going to plug that up. It's going to be on the side. I'm really not going to draw that much attention to it. Alrighty, so I wasn't going to use this top, I was going to use a different one, but I put it on there and it didn't work, so I've gone back to the original top. I have fixed the corners that needed fixing with sawdust and glue and shaped it out, glue on the back there, and I've shaped out the corners with that plastic wood that I have. Once all of that is dry, I'm going to give it another sand and then I'm going to coat everything in shellac white base primer. I don't usually like to do that when I'm going to be painting in a dark colour. I am going to be painting it dark blue. But I just want it all same, same. Yeah, I just want it done properly.
hit a snag with two of the drawers. The left and right corner were a bit dated. Those drawers are gonna go there and there. I removed the door from the middle. I'm trying to reuse what I already have so I'm not spending any more money. So I've used the blocks of wood that were on the drawers and on the door and I've laid them out in a different pattern. I think it could work. <laughs> we'll see, it could go pear shaped. If I make a wrong cut or a crooked cut, I'm up Pop Creek without a paddle. That's Aussie for, <laughs> as I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> use your imagine. <laughs> um, uh, use your imagine. Use your imagination. A poop creek without a paddle. So that's the G rated version of that Aussie saying. So here we go. Fingers crossed. I talked to my friend Trish at Lilacs and Lou, and she recommended using pole wrap, which was a fantastic idea, beautiful idea. I tried to go do that. I went to Home Depot yesterday. And they don't sell pole wrap. And the guy was really rude, which just makes me so annoyed. There's the assumption that if you're a woman, <laughs> somehow you don't know what you're talking about. And I told him I was looking for pole wrap and he looked at me like I had three heads and he was like, I've never heard of that. And he, he looked it up in their system. And he's like, oh, I guess we do have it. And then he looked further and he goes, Actually, no, we don't carry it anymore. And I was like, what? It's on your website. I drove all the way here and you don't have it. He was like, yeah, no, I don't know what to tell you. So, good on you, Home Depot. So, I'm abandoning the pole wrap idea for now. I love these kinds of dresses that, you know, 70s, 80s, and 90s are fabulous dresses to make over. They're usually, if they haven't been completely trashed, they're usually pretty good bones. You can even, you know, fix it up a little bit and bring it into 2022, which I feel like is what I did with this. I'm glad that Home Depot didn't have pole wrap. I may look into using pole wrap on another piece in the future because I've seen people do it and it looks really nice. But I'm so glad this is right up my alley. This is the reuse, recycle, and it was like a game of Tetris. And I think it turned out really nice. Oh, the top coat, okay. I was having issues with the top coat. It felt like it was streaky and it was just showing every imperfection on the top. 
right? I'm not a machine. <laughs> I make over these pieces and I fix them up as best I could and it's definitely 100% better than what it was but there's still imperfections in the wood and stuff like that. So I felt like the top coat was just showing off the imperfections which was annoying me. So it had two coats of the top coat and I think the top even got three coats because so I wasn't I wasn't giving up. I was gonna keep on going and keep on trying. Trish over on Lilacs and Lou, she's in on Instagram. She posted a photo of a dresser and it was beautiful. It was black, it was buttery, it was silky, it was gorgeous. And the secret, you know, I don't know if Trish wants me to share it with you all or not. <laughs> Sorry Trish. <laughs> Hemp oil hemp oil so I painted over the scuff sanded the top coat that was there and I did one more go of the chalk paint and now I've put hemp oil on it oh, it's perfect I love it my husband came in and took a look at it and he was like oh I really like that I was like no you don't <laughs> no you don't you don't like it we have to sell it so yeah, it, it, it is quite lovely. All right guys, love ya, and I can't wait to see you on next week's piece. Bye. Jan, thank you so much for letting me include these pictures of a faux denim piece you did recently. I so enjoyed our conversation and was completely humbled that you were inspired by something I did. Thank you. I keep hearing, I keep hearing things. We had a snake in our yard. Next door's cats was following it all the way through our yard. Australians don't mess around with snakes, mate. We have the worst snakes. The worst snakes in the world uh, apparently the snake that came through our yard was only caught it was a racer a racer snake or something I don't know anyway it's supposed to be not that bad but Tennessee does have bad snakes they have a copperhead and a rattlesnake and a no no <laughs> if I had known that about Tennessee oi, oi, oi. I don't like snakes no. But anyway, yeah, so I keep hearing things and I'm just paranoid and now every time I walk out my back door and make sure there's no snake around me. Mm -hmm.